Charlie, hi! Yay! Let's get to Drag Race, sweetie. Let's, do. Let's go. So, you already have quite a bit of success under your belt when you apply. It had been the first year you had applied? I applied for season eight. Okay. Never heard anything, thank you very much. <laughs> and then applied for season nine and yeah. uh, got asked to do the psych evaluation. Okay. Which apparently which I passed. Good news, <laughs> I guess. I don't so, know how that happened. It was quite the surprise, <laughs> I assure you. And, uh, then, you know, so I flew back, um, I was flying back and forth from Boston to uh, spending a lot of time in Boston at the time. And I think I, I landed at Heathrow and I uh, was jet lagged off my ass. I got a call at like midnight, which was, you know, four o'clock in the afternoon in LA. And they said, Congratulations. I was like, oh, Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then I said, Wait, huh? What? What did you just say? Could you say that again? <laughs> right. And they said, Congratulations, you're in season nine. And I just started screaming, and car alarms went off. My husband went off, woke up, the dog started barking, and uh, then the, the adventure began. John I know. McGovern. So, what did you have to So, what was, how long did you have? Like two weeks to prep? Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, and so weeks. now you made a lot of your stuff yourself? I made everything that I wore on the show. Uh -huh. um, yes. I, I made everything that I brought with me as well. Um, but some things, because they give you this long ass list. Right. Um, and some things you think, okay, well, uh, I can wear, you know, I've got that. And, you know, I, I made a bunch of things, stockpiled them, and never shown them on Instagram or Facebook. I never wore them in shows mm -hmm. um, just so that they would be a revelation. Right. Um, and so when I saw the list, I thought I could wear that one, that one, that one. But then there were things like um, Hometown and The Pilgrim and then uh, White Party and Sexy Unicorn or right. whatever. <laughs> so the list was, and then, then at the last minute we were given the Lady Gaga. I think maybe we had 10 days notice on the Lady Gaga. Mm. Now that one you were like, oh, I got this bitch. I got Lady Gaga around my closet. I didn't. I, di I did have to make it because they um, they wanted us to choose which one we wanted to do. Uh -huh. And then they wanted to make sure nobody was doing the double thing. Because <laughs> right. they didn't want the Madonna kimono gate <laughs> yes. to happen again. <laughs> so they made sure that we were all doing different different versions of Gaga. So I think I had to submit my two, two or three favorite. Um, and they chose the white one, I think. Or I said it was my top pick. Nobody else picked it, uh -huh. and so then I had to run to the fabric store and buy the fabric and and make it. I think I, I think I gave myself. I had just under a day for each of the things I made. Wow. Yeah. Impressive, because you really did slay the runway, didn't she, Lady Red? Thank you very much. Girl, let me say something. Miss Charlie Hyde is one of those girls you think she's just gonna sit in the corner, but before you know, this bitch is on the runway, just looking spectacular, old ass. Oh, that was sort of a compliment, I, I think. Well, I'll take it. <laughs> you always get a backhand from me. Because <laughs> uh, you really did slay those looks. You always yes. look really beautiful, pulled together, and cunt, very cunt on that runway. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I, I'm, I'm very proud of how well I, I did on the runway. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I think I got mostly, I think I got all toots from you know, those other two girls over at that other show. Oh, yes, show. God bless. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> now, uh, so you get there, you know you're probably going to be the oldest. Yeah, I was pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> Well, I know that, like, I know they'll only have, you know, they'll only have, like, one big girl from the South. Right. And, you know, that, that sort of All thing. All the different archetypes that they, they <laughs> exactly. get together. Exactly. Exactly. I was surprised to see three girls from New York. That was a bit of a... Um, but yeah, I knew I'd be, I was pretty sure I'd be the oldest. And how was the energy when you first got into the workroom and that whole first group of the time? Well, when I saw how young Faramone and Valentina were, I've only been doing drag 15 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought this isn't, this is not drag race, this is toddlers and tiaras. These, <laughs> these, you know, Aja looked like a sperm in a dress. You know, he was so young, <laughs> so young. Um, but uh, everyone, you know, everyone was friendly, and it was great to see Peppermint because I, I knew Peppermint. Um, Peppermint was the only one that I, I I had met before. Where did you meet her? Were it through she, work or drag uh, work? Uh, or? She's obviously really close with Sherry Vine. I've known Sherry Vine, and I've done a lot of Atlantis cruises together. Oh, okay. And uh, so she, Peppermint and Sherry, I think, uh, were in in London, 
doing a show and they came to see me at the Royal Vauxhall Tavern. Oh no, it was Joey Arias and Peppermint. Oh, I think. nice. I, I, I could be totally wrong. Be wrong. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Peppermint came to see my show at the Royal Vauxhall Tavern. Okay, so Tavern. you knew her, so it felt, and yeah. she was a little closer closer on that that edge of the spectrum of Yeah, age. yeah, just incredible. I mean, she's got such a friendly face. Yes, she does. Um, so that, that, that put me at ease. That's good. Yeah. So now, uh, you said when you got there, you were already jet lagged, and then the competition began, and you started to get less and less sleep that you wished you had brought sleeping pills with you. I, um, yeah, <laughs> that was my that was my tactical error. Uh, I didn't bring I didn't bring sleeping pills. I mean that's that's fine. I can deal a couple of nights without sleep. Right, um, right. And, but these those were you know there were long days, um, and and it, and it started getting. Uh, more challenging, but it wasn't. It wasn't so much the not getting sleep as when I cracked my rib during the cheerleading. Then I really couldn't sleep because every time I rolled over, oh. there was like a knife in my yeah. knife in my rib. So that wasn't that wasn't fun. But like I said, I can go two, three, four days on an hour or two sleep. Yeah. But after the, <laughs> after a while, uh -huh. I was hallucinating and you know. Um, uh, Eureka looked friendly, and um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Aja looked like exactly like her face tuned pictures. It was, like, it was, it was all. Uh, <laughs> you wanted me to go there. <laughs> oh, no, don't okay. pretend the you right, don't want the right me band. to. There it is. <laughs> now let's talk about that cheerleading challenge. You got hurt. You cracked the rib. Yeah. What, did you tell anybody you cracked the rib? Uh, not at first. Not mm -hmm. at first. Um, uh, I was just, the thing is, being the oldest, okay, so we had already done the Gaga episode. We had already done a couple of days of rehearsing for the cheerleading. And it wasn't uh, until the day we were actually filming the cheerleading. Because I'd had to lift Shea Coulee, who's half my age. I had to lift him, not 20 times, but like 30 or 40 times. Uh -huh. um, and so when I felt it go, I cracked the same rib twice before. Oh boy. So I sort of knew, I sort of knew, but the thing is I didn't want people to know I'm British, darling. Uh -huh. um, you know the scene in Monty Python, her Search of the uh, Holy Grail, mm -hmm. where the knight is like he gets his arms cut off and his legs cut off and, he's, and he says, merely a flesh wound. Right. Um, <laughs> he's like, I'm fine. Merely a uh, flesh wound. No problem. Keep but going. But I didn't want those bitches to know that, um, that I was struggling because they'll cull the weakest from the pack. Right. So I just figured just shut up about it, keep going, get to the weekend, get a good night's, you know, get sleep over the weekend. Um, that was that was sort of my strategy. Don't whinge, don't moan, don't you know, just keep going. And so I. And, but then when it came to the lingerie, and they actually saw me duct tape because I'd been duct taping my ribs privately. Oh, honey! I was duct taping, and um, and they. Uh, I think it was uh, Cynthia and Nina. The like, girl, what are you doing? I was, I was duct taping my ribs. Um, and then I talked about it on the runway because anything that happens in the workroom when there's a camera and a mic on, they know. Right. The producers know. Um, so like when one of the judges said, you look like, Charlie looks like he's sleepwalking. And another one, he looks like he's dead behind the eyes. They knew I was dead behind the eyes. <laughs> right. They knew I was sleepwalking, you know. <laughs> um, and so uh, one of the judges asked me about, why aren't you wearing your corset? I was standing beside Peppermint and Eureka. Uh -huh. And they're asking me, who was 10 pounds thinner than this, why, why I didn't have a corset on. Wow. Which was, which was sizest, Johnny McCovey. Oh, it was. How dare! I know, um, <laughs> but they knew. You know, they knew that they, that I they, they'd watch me in you know duct taping my ribs. So I just said, and I I didn't think that I was in the bottom two uh -huh. because I saw what Peppermint was wearing, uh -huh. <laughs> and I thought, there's no way it's not her and and Trinity in the bottom two. So I just said, yeah, I've, I've I cracked my rib, and that's why I'm not wearing a corset. And I thought, you know, have another glass of wine in the untucked lounge because you saved Charlie. <laughs> right. Because look at what Peppermint's wearing. Uh huh. And then, so then you get out there, you find out you're in the bottom two, and what's going through your head? What went through my head at that point? Because remember, it's a long day. Yeah. Uh, it's a very long day. There'd already been a break. There'd already been like you know dinner and everything, and my rib was just it was killing me. Oh. It was just killing me, and I just knew. You're in pain because when just walking, every time you you take a deep deep breath and inhale, it's like getting a knife in. So when I walked the runway, I was like this, you know, just walking in pain. And I knew there's no way you can really dance. Mm. Um, so the, the the thought that went through my head: just give authentic Britney 2007. You were dressed like a slut, lip sync badly, and you're dead behind the eyes. Uh -huh. That is that is perfect, <laughs> vintage Britney. Right. <laughs> 
And I thought, there's no reason I can't slay that. Um, that thought went through my, one of the thoughts went, because everything moves in like slow motion. Right. The thought was, I know Trinity is going to be doing cartwheels and flying off the rafters. And so one of the thoughts that went through my head was, don't compete with Trinity, compete with Tammy Brown. Okay, <laughs> just be weird. <laughs> well, just just be as as immobile. And then the other thing that went through my head was, well, okay, what is this? Because I, I knew I wasn't going to be able to really move very much. And I the thought did go through my head, like if you take, you're capable of taking two steps to the left and two steps to the right, mm -hmm. and walking a little bit. But anything beyond that, I was I knew I wasn't capable of. And I thought if I do that, I'm just going to look lame. Right. So I just thought, stay put, don't move and do as little as possible, and then try to sell the song from the point of view, because the song is about, it's about masturbation. Yeah, like every Britney song. It's, I want to <laughs> go, oh, oh, it's, it, yeah, that's what it's about. Um, so I just thought I would, and. There was a very light pussy petting yeah, going on, very light. Yeah, but another light. thought that went through my head is, you know, my 89-year-old parents are going to be watching <laughs> right. this, and I can't get down on the ground and roll around like Madonna. You know, doing like a virgin, uh -huh. you know, fading masturbation on Drag Race. Lots of things went through my head. I Tom. bet, I Lots bet. Lots of things. And one of the thoughts that went through my head is, in 24 hours, you're going to be back home in England with your husband. <laughs> right. You're like, never mind the lip sync, never mind the moves. Yeah. Oh, the other um. thought that went through my head was, um, you don't know all the lyrics 100%, Charlie. There were two songs on the playlist that I didn't, like I knew, holding out for hero and YMCA uh -huh. and um, what was a love shack. Knew those down. You know, I knew there'd be no problem. There were two songs I said, I hope if I'm ever in the bottom show, I hope I don't get them. one. Was a Megan Trainer song, never heard it before, and the Britney song. And when they said it's the Britney, oh. So uh, yeah. it You've was never a perfect heard I want to go before, really? No, 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 it was never it was never in the charts in the UK. Oh boy. No, it was never. No, I'd never heard it. And what about the idea to just give a really tight lip sync? You just didn't know the words? No, I knew most I knew I like I knew the I knew the, I knew the first verse. Okay. I, yeah. I knew the chorus. <laughs> um, I mean girls have gotten through on that before, depending on how the yeah. performance gets edited, yeah. really. Yeah, I I I I wasn't hundred percent con I wasn't as confident with it is is say if I if I got Love Shack or right, you right. Know, something that I bought on something I bought on on vinyl. Right. <laughs> <laughs> something something you were there the day it came out exactly. at the record store. Yeah, that at Tower exist Records, anymore. yeah. Oh my god. It gosh. was a per it was a perfect storm. Right. And I kind of I you know, I kind of I kinda of knew that I didn't have it in me to push, you know, to to I knew that if I really, really pushed, I could hurt myself. Yeah. I was, I was hurting, and um, and that's you know, and, and Eureka says you gave up, you gave up. It's like, it's it's not giving up when you know there's there's nothing you've got to give. Like mm. I was on empty. Yeah. I was on empty, and I was in pain, and and um, and you know, Trinity is a brilliant performer. It's a lot of flips, <laughs> a lot of dives, a lot, a lot of, of dips, a lot of lot, body. There's a lot of hairography. Like yeah. I said, because I don't lip sync full like as regularly, mm -hmm. I don't do it as part of my show. Um, she lip syncs all the time. That's what she does. Yeah, sure. And so I, I think I, at the reunion, I equated it to making sushi. You know, I know how to do it. <laughs> I do it twice a year. Uh. But Trinity does it. <laughs> She's a professional sushi chef. Mm, yeah. So. Now, what was the, now just to clear it up, at the reunion, yeah. it seemed like there were multiple reasons they were talking about. Oh, the well, then. The rib, and then there was something else, well, and then, then the classic. Diarrhea, well, which is the main <laughs> question we got on Reddit. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I mentioned I had had diarrhea the first day of cheerleading oh, rehearsal. Oh, God. Uh, um, and, I'm and sorry that you I don't know why they brought diarrhea. it up. Nobody else. For God's sake. <laughs> when you dress as a cheerleader, the last thing you want to do is have the shit. Yes, exactly. Um, <laughs> but no, I don't know why they brought it up, because that was weeks before uh -huh. that it happened. And I, I never said that that's why. You know, I, I never... It was never, never crossed my lips then. Right, because it was RuPaul that was like, "Did you say you had diarrhea?" Yeah, and I was but like, "RuPaul." Well, the weird please. thing about that is, um, <laughs> I've shat myself, <laughs> and I had to go into the bathroom, take off my underpants, and I'm looking around, and I actually had to put it, in, lift up some trash, and stick it into the, <laughs> the bin. <laughs> then, then Johnny McGovern, <laughs> then, <laughs> then this hot. Studly, gorgeous, like 26 year old athlete 
is lifting me up on his shoulders, uh -huh. and I have, I've got my legs wrapped, and like five or six times he's lifting me up over his, I'm like, please do not fart on this guy. Please <laughs> do not fart. Because I mean, I've had embarrassing things happen yeah. to me, and I'm not ashamed to talk about it. One time, <laughs> after, after having sex, I looked, I, I took off the condom, put it on the bedside stand. The next day, I'm looking for it. Couldn't find it anywhere. My dog was looking suspicious. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Two days later, I'm in the park walking my dog, and I'm talking to my neighbor, and yeah. all of a sudden, my dog starts to, and this condom is hanging, and I had to try to convince my neighbor that I haven't been fucking my dog. Oh. So I'm not afraid to talk about embarrassing things, Johnny. Oh not afraid in the least. Oh. Some people, they like, that. it's my gold, you know? Oh, my God. oh, it's always good to end on a laugh You're line. very welcome, Johnny. <laughs> Thank you, Charlie. Charlie, it's so great to see you, honey. It's a pleasure, I love babe. having you on the show. You you always look amazing, and you've always been one of the nicest queens, so I'm always happy to see I'm you I'm able here. to fake my personality for 45 minutes, Johnny. All right, <laughs> well, we did it. We're right about there. Um, uh, Charlie, you turned it so fiercely, honey, that you have snatched the trophy! Yay! Thank you so much. Congratulations, my dad. And oh, also, no, honey, no. you've won yourself a lap dance! Yay! Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our Hey Queen podcast up here. Check out more of our incredible interviews down here. And of course, don't forget to what? Subscribe! Subscribe. <laughs>